Hello, Lovix here. I'm still alive. Let's recap the last year. As Broker's crew, I started to have some issues with GDScript and kinda lost my mind. So I made some side projects with my favorite language Rust, which only led to one uh, logical conclusion, I had to rewrite everything in Rust. That's when I discovered Bevy, a data-oriented game engine written in Rust that was perfect for the game I had in mind. Very quickly I fell in love with Bevy. Everything was so modular and so easy to design, at least in my mind. But before we get into Bevy, let's take a step back and look at what actually happened in the last year, progress-wise. To sum it up, I added behavior trees, a lot of particle effects, weapon behaviors, an inventory system, um, the circle of death that just constantly follows you around so you cannot move backwards and yeah, I never finished the game loop. That's when the problems with GD script arised, especially when it came to multi-threading. I was didn't feel so good and that's why in the end I got kind of frustrated, burned out on the project and in the end decided to switch. And this is what it currently looks like running in Bevy. The concept is still the same. We have an infinite growing world using a wave function collapse algorithm to build this world and you will fight lots of lots of enemies growing stronger and fight bosses in between. Everything is physics based. I invested quite a lot of time to implement really good top-down car physics with drifting, um, shifting years and different gear ratios. There's just a little bit of feedback missing like playing animations on shifting and making the camera a little bit shaky if you do so. These things will come later. Trust me, they are there and it will feel amazing. Another thing I had to learn when I switched to Bevy was writing my own compute shaders. Um, the tracks you see in the background that are currently drawn whenever the car is drifting, that is basically a compute shader that persists these kind of effects onto a big image. That is insanely performant. Uh, when I compare that to my old Godot version, that's not even close. I can. I can basically uh, draw infinite tracks and it doesn't even matter when it comes to FPS. Of course the current graphics, especially when it comes to the map, are mostly placeholder graphics. I haven't invested too much into art yet. As I said earlier, I'm more focused on the systems. One thing I implemented that was a huge improvement in quality of life was hot reloading my assets directly from the Asperite binaries. No more JSON files, no more PNGs, just as write files. This was a huge improvement on quality of life. I even can hot reload animations. That is actually not that easy to do and I'm very very happy with that. Same goes for everything else. Whenever I need some data or some definitions of entities, I use run files. That's similar to JSON where I store all my data. And with Bevy, I implemented a loading macro that allows me to hot reload these things so I can change them while the game is running and they take effect immediately. I still cannot believe how easy that is. It's just a single Rust macro, it's 80 lines of codes, it's on the screen right now, and then you can just simply define, struct, call it an asset, add anything, and even add handlers to other assets, and everything gets loaded and hot reloaded the way you want to. Huge shout out to fellow Bevy enthusiast Tantan. He came up with the original idea and has a great video about those kind of macros and with Bevy 0.12 it even got easier. Next up, proceed generating the world with wave function collapse. I use LDK, a free and open source Tile map editor that is just perfect for this case. The function collapse require that each tile has a certain rule set of what can connect to what. And as you can see, I just color coded the edges and uh, wrote a script that generates socket identifications from these color codes. Additionally, I can mark uh, certain tiles with entity tags that are just enums. And with that, I can set spawners, I can set areas where buildings can spawn and so on. 
I have a couple of them set up and also I can set a weight for each tile. Like for example, if I change the weight of the empty tile to a very high amount, let's quickly run the game and see what happens. And as you can see, now the primal tile you see in the world is the empty tile. So that is really nice. This can also be done dynamically. I can like include the player precision and change how the world is generated depending on where the player is currently. That leaves a lot of a lot of ways how to manipulate the world in a dynamic way. I'm looking forward to it, to play with it even more. And one another tile, as you can see right now, is I can set presets on the map that get included and collapsed correctly to, like an event, for example a boss. Of course, these are also done in LDK. I can set a boss spawner and some enemy spawners and all I have to do is color code the edges so that the wave function collapse algorithm connect to these dynamically. I do the same for the player spawn as you can see here right now. LDK's world data is just a big JSON file and there are already crates out there that deserialize these in a Rust struct makes it very easy to use. Another feature I had to implement myself were 9-patch textures. These are used for UI elements to only stretch the parts in between and keep the corners intact. Since I couldn't find another crate doing this for Bevy UI, I published my own and gave something back to the community. Link is in the description, feel free to use it in your own project. And in just two days, the Bevy Gem 4 will start and I cannot wait. This will be quite the nice experience, I haven't done Game Gem. Um, yet, but I happen to have some free time and I for sure will participate. That's it from me and until next time. Bye!